Hi there, my name is Toby, and on this video, I want to take the time to answer some of the criticisms of my ether physics. And I'm talking really to the serious scientists that have taken the time to watch my videos and give me uh, very serious, thoughtful criticisms of it. And I'm very grateful because I know that the majority of real scientists, serious scientists, will just skip over my videos. They take one look and laugh and move on. So I'm very grateful that you at least took the time to listen to them, think about them and give me a response. I'm very grateful and I've got the utmost respect for you. And this is the first thing I've got to say. I am not dismissing science. I'm not dismissing it at all. I know that I'm making controversial videos. I'm doing it on purpose. I'm being very blunt, very uh, aggressive seemingly in my approach to this for, for an effect. I'm trying to break through an idea that is established and it, sometimes I've got to cut through. So I, I know what I'm doing and it does require courage on my part. It took me many years to pluck up the courage to even start this channel. I know that everything I say is goes against mainstream knowledge, but I also go against alternative knowledge. I'm going against everyone on this channel, really. Uh, so I know I'm putting myself up there for criticism and people are going to think I'm mad, mad as a hatter. Uh, I know that. I know that. And I question myself as well every time, all the time I'm questioning. Am I mad? Am I deluded? Is there a logic to this? Uh, and every video I put out, I'm questioning that. Is this crazy what I'm putting out? But I still put it out. See, I'm not doing this to be popular. Uh, I'm not even doing this to make money, though it would be nice to make a living. Um, I'm doing this to express an idea that I believe very strongly in. And I believe it from my heart. And this is very tricky when talking about science. Because science is not a belief. And that's why they're going to dismiss me. How can you believe this ether? Where's the science? Ah, now, I'm not dismissing modern science. What I'm saying is modern science is engineering. It's all engineering. It's not philosophy. What I'm talking about is philosophy. I'm going through a bit deeper. I'm going to the ultimate philosophy of the cosmos. That's very difficult to talk about. And I talk about it archetypally, emotionally. You have to look behind my words. You have to look a bit deeper. If I were to explain this step by step, it's going to take forever. And I, I've got so much to say about this, I can't even go back to my previous videos. I've got to keep going forward. Each video I've got to talk about the next thing, the next thing. I haven't even started yet. So modern scientists, you serious critics, please, please give me a chance. Keep listening to my videos bit by bit. I hope that I will answer your questions. I'm not disagreeing with you. Engineering is perfectly fine. All the science you have done is good. It's working. We can see it. What I'm saying is the model, the underlying model that is being used is not good enough. It's not quite good enough. If you would just move into the ether model, it means you have to stretch into philosophy. It will take your engineering up to another level. You see, the reason you dismiss metaphysics is useless. What's the point? What engineering can I do with metaphysics? Nothing. You have dismissed it. Now, there is engineering that can be done with ether. It's totally different. The most notable engineering with ether are these old world buildings, old cathedrals, old temples, the pyramids. There are temples so old, so vast, so complex, the mathematics in there is so detailed, and we haven't even looked at the mathematics. The mathematics in there will be incommensurable mathematics. It will be the mathematics around the golden ratio. And when I talk about the golden ratio, I don't just mean the number. I mean all the mathematics around it. It's very difficult mathematics. I can't even explain it. There is a guy, Ken Wheeler, who explains it quite well. But even he says it's too difficult to explain. You've got to study Pythagoras and all these people. But it is such a serious mathematics around the golden ratio, it connects to the very philosophy of the universe itself. It's, it, 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 it takes this to another level. If you can go through this mathematics, you will understand it's not belief anymore. It's understanding. 
It's not belief. It's not belief. It is scientific, but it's moving into philosophy, <laughs> metaphysics. How do I explain that? Um, so these old world buildings are using a technology. The, the mathematics, the geometry is doing something. It, but what is it doing? We can't see any engineering. It is doing something in the ether. The ether is metaphysics. It's creating a metaphysical engineering. And who benefits from that? Living things. We as living beings going into these buildings get this energy. But it's not a physical energy that you can measure. Now saying that, these cathedrals and these buildings were also electrostatic. They were, they were transforming uh, ether into electrostatics, but they have lost their potential. We, we've changed these buildings now, we're, we're destroying them. We don't know what they were like when they were working properly. When they were working properly, I believe they inside those buildings would be a highly ionized atmosphere. It will be electrostatically charged. The air will be charged up and that would be physically measurable. You would be able to measure the electrostatics outside the building, then you'd be able to measure the electrostatics inside the building and it would be huge, massive. And that would be done through ether technology, through the geometry of the building and through connecting to the electrostatics of the atmosphere and the earth. Also the earth, the electricity in the earth, it was connecting to that. Organic movements of electricity, living force. Living energy, the ether, is organic movements of electricity. In my body is the same electricity, but it's all changing. Different frequencies, different movements, different pulsations. Who's controlling that? The soul, the spirit. This is metaphysics. The soul and the spirit is not physical. I cannot measure it. I cannot do any engineering on the soul or the spirit. But the soul or the spirit has done all this engineering. You serious scientists are still souls and spirits, and you've done that engineering. All I'm saying is open your mind to philosophy. You have to look at the ether as a philosophical extension of engineering. But when you go there, you can come back to engineering and you will consider things you have not considered before, most notably free energy machines. These structures, like the pyramids, were free energy machines because they were resonating with metaphysical geometry, particular geometry that is good for creating life, creating energy. And that would literally also transform into electrostatics. If you could focus it, implode that geometry. And engineering is built upon existing energy, entropic energy. That's why the first law of thermodynamics applies. Everything in the, in the material world that it already exists must follow the first law of thermodynamics. I'm not denying that. I am saying that ether physics is a different physics because it's talking about something outside material reality. Therefore, first law of thermodynamics does not apply. I'm talking about bringing energy into reality. It's literally appearing. It is coming from nothing. It's coming from the ether and it's going back in. It will also disappear back into the ether. Now, when you understand that, that's a different philosophy. Now your engineering will change because you don't think about first law of thermodynamics anymore. You've got to think about how do we create some engineering that triggers, that triggers the ether to manifest into electromagnetism. How do I create electromagnetism from nothing? This magnet has created electromagnetism, but engineering created it. This is man-made. We had to align all the atoms together. We had to make an alignment. We had to do that engineering, but that alignment is geometry. You've put the atoms into a geometry. That geometry has triggered, triggered the ether to create electromagnetism. It's coming out. That is a free energy. That is the ether appearing from the center of the field. That's the philosophy. It's different. But if you understand that, now you're going to think about engineering in a different way. You're not limited. Quantum mechanics is an attempt to try to bridge into metaphysics, but it cannot do it. It will always fail. It will only ever get you so far. 
You have to let that go and think about the philosophy of ether. It's no longer digital, it's pure fluid. That's a whole different thing. It's not fluid like water, so it will not follow exact fluid dynamics. It's electrical, but electricity is a fluid. It's not quantum. It's pure fluid. Different philosophy will lead to different mathematics, will lead to different engineering. But again, I humbly, I know I must come across arrogant in a lot of the things I say. And I'm putting myself on the line. I know that I'm opening myself up for ridicule. I'm putting my head on the block. But I have to do it to try and cut through and open your mind to a different idea. And I'm still utterly convinced about this idea. I can see it, I can feel it, but of course I can't explain it. You've done 10 years of a degree in physics from 10 different professors. This only me. I need 10 different professors expert on ether physics, ether engineering, and I need a university. Then I'll have to put you through 10 years of that, and then maybe you'll be able to see what I see. You have to look through what I'm saying, try and go to the philosophy and see if deep down you can see the logic. You've got to use your critical mind and I've got, I have got to accept I could be totally deluded and I question myself, like I said, all the time, but deep down I know I'm not. I still have to say it and I still have to make these videos. Um, so please do bear with me, at least keep an eye on me and look through some of my lectures because I do explain all of this in more detail through my magical science lecture series. A different model of the universe, I explain a particle, again you'll laugh at my idea about a particle, but there is only one particle because it is based on understanding a stationary wave of the field, the electromagnetic field that is. See so again, there's two things going on. Metaphysics is the ether. That is a pure fluid field, but it's not physical. This is the soul, the spirit, consciousness, feelings. And then you've got electromagnetism, or the dielectric field. Dielectric field is a better way of saying it. Dielectricity, electrostatics. Electrostatics creates magnetism. These two things are always come together. So then you have a second field, which is electromagnetism, that is the physical. Now we can re read that, do engineering with it. You guys are using electromagnetism. I'm trying to talk about ether. If you can understand ether, now it's the bridge. Now ether is the one that creates electromagnetism. And we're doing that as living things. I'm a life form, a soul. A soul is metaphysical ether, but I am created a body. I'm doing something physical. Metaphysics has translated into physics. That is the engineering that I'm talking about. That is the free energy machine that I'm talking about. So thank you again so much for listening. I do appreciate you spending your time and I'm, I'm very grateful to, to you for that. And I look forward to, and I hope to see you in any of these other videos here.